pašam. As, as, uh, as it was told, I represent Vals Nekustami Ipašumi, Sarmita Ozola. So we are 100% owned by the state and it would be illogical if we acted against the national policies. Uh, and, and, and it would be also logical if the state would not uh, support these practices in its companies. According to the classification of businesses uh, in uh, Latvia, we would be considered a large company. We mostly deal with management of immobile property, and these are properties used by pub for public purposes. These are of uh, public importance. We also build and develop such properties, and when uh, these properties have lost their value or functionally uh, are not uh, needed anymore, so then they are disposed of, and uh, this disposal is uh, a function delegated to us by the state. As a, a state capital, as a state's uh, own company, uh, we are guided by the decisions of uh, the uh, decisions of the government of the state, and uh, these. And uh, during the next five years, we have to focus on sustainability, on efficiency, on investment in construction and on uh, modern and uh, adequate qualitative uh, uh, employment environment. And here I'm speaking about energy efficient uh, offices, offices that support people's needs, open offices and so on. What concerns construction and challenges in the construction sector from the point of view of human rights? First and foremost, occupational uh, safety risks. Together with the state labor inspectorate, we look at reports because the official statistics is the basis that allow us to that allow us to look deeper into these risks and allow us to uh, conclude that the risks do exist uh, because they have been identified uh, or found somewhere. Next, unregistered employment and shadow economy. Unfortunately, according to the last report, last study, uh, the construction uh, sector has quite a large share that concerns the grey economy. Uh, here we looked at the official data from the state level inspectorate and uh, guest workers is a challenge or are a challenge, not because they would interfere somehow with us, but these are people that come to our country, they don't know the local language, thus they have limited possibilities to find out about their rights. Unless there is someone who explains, who tells about this, who uh, tells them about what rights they have, uh, for example, what concerns wages, social protection, and so on. Human rights risks. I already mentioned sustainability and occupational safety, and now we have to look at the human rights. Where, where these human rights are? What concerns our operations? First, we have to identify uh, human rights, and they are in various documents. And then we also look at uh, have to look at human rights in, main, in three of our main activities. First, disposal, development and management. These larger areas contain smaller sub-areas, and then we can look at which stage uh, human uh, rights risk could emerge. And to have more objective uh, access assessments, we use uh, various structural units because this is not a competence of just one unit. Colleagues from all development uh, directions participated, also support functions like personnel, human rights, and so on. So together, uh, we prepared the following um, division, for example, like fundamental employment rights, uh, for example, proper registration of working hours, proper payment, also PPAs. Um, 
For us, it seems logical, but it's not like that for everyone. We also looked at the statistics, we looked at our uh, operational areas, um, tried to understand where we could have higher risks or risks that would uh, point to the fact that there could be human rights violations like unregistered employment, lack of employment contracts, or the employment forms are uh, such that they ensure lesser protection, like seasonal work, temporary work, uh, unlimited work, and so on. We also looked at probabilities, because in our experience uh, we have had cases that, of course, when we have official statistics, we can see that in specific uh, cases there could be higher um, probabilities like lethality or lack of employment agreement or guest workers and so on. We also assessed various uh, consequences uh, from various points of view, like our internal risks, risks that affect our employees, uh, whether these violations or breaches uh, could result in injury to our employees and our company. And there are also external risks, uh, external risks that um, result from our suppliers in our supply chain. I will continue. We will continue about um, being aware of risks. So, when we know the risks, so how do we approach? How do we approach suppliers? How do we ask them? Do you have this risk or not? We cannot ask uh, specifically. Do you have lethalities or something else? But then we have a list of control questions. So we ask: uh, Do you have migrant workers? Do you employ? children or um, do you have uh, some other people and also then we have on-site visits um, of course uh, this is our object we don't have rights to, to visit the uh, uh, suppliers objects or other objects but, uh, but uh, only our object and then in our process uh, we do self-assessment whether we ourselves have what we are demanding from others and then also selection of uh, suppliers as uh, we we are arranging those risks. Uh, we see also what's uh, the length uh, of uh, this uh, supplier's uh, contract and so on. And we uh, rank them like top five, and then we ask them to, for the interview. But some of them refused. And uh, actually, yes, this is um, we don't have uh, in legislative acts any demand for suppliers to agree on those audits. So those audits we need a mutual agreement. And so according to our experience, as we had refusals, there, there, there were some, maybe some companies who were ready to start some discussions, negotiations. And uh, um, we wanted to um, highlight that the task of this audit was not to punish somebody, but to educate. And uh, the public procurement law is binding for us, and uh, we cannot uh, uh, stop cooperation with somebody uh, just because they say we don't want your audit uh, and, and then we say no no we will not continue the contract so uh, unfortunately we cannot do it and about our conclusion so those who refused um, and those who agreed um, we concluded that very important is to have a conversation and, uh, and to explain what is the meaning the, the essence of this audit and also that so we will not uh, create a list of good and bad companies and uh, disseminate it. That we are mainly educating, and uh, this is also for us. And next, um, some companies that uh, actually had higher risks, after visiting them, we saw that they have lower risks. And so they also, in our top, they get uh, to the place where there are lower risks. And as I said, no. Nobody has an obligation to agree to those audits, but there were, yes, there were companies that agreed. And they said, yes, you can come, you can have a look. Uh, everybody has some, maybe some, uh, not uh, everything is ideal, but still um, they were ready for us to come. And so we were thinking how to support them. Um, of course, uh, uh, through procurement, uh, we are limited to whom we can give some uh, first hand through whom not, but uh, 
So what we did is we, we just uh, were also uh, asking uh, and assessing the opinion of interested parties. And interested parties in the construction sector, they propose that those um, uh, companies that do the homework, those uh, who are um, working in line with human rights and also with sustainability, they are changing uh, their practice, their operations, they educate their employees. And so the proposal was for those companies who have done this and who do it, they uh, need to have some kind of remuneration, some praise. And we want to, we are, we were also thinking how to highlight them among others. And what about the future? Uh, besides um, the support, uh, of course, in our contracts, we will also include uh, the notion about uh, respecting human rights, but this is already in the legislation, so nothing else. Raising awareness, this, like colleagues said, we are doing this also on the construction field and uh, everywhere else. Uh, we um, just um, give these instructions to them because we cannot guarantee. Uh, we, not always we have the information whether the direct employer has explained everything about the working conditions and about all the procedures. So that would be all um, from my story. Uh, just in short, I could say that uh, we are just in the beginning. I told uh, what uh, our things are ahead of us, so we need also maybe support from the state to motivate the companies to be interested in human rights and, uh, and also to motivate them uh, not to be afraid of those audits because we are not uh, there to punish them, but uh, to improve. Yes, that's all. Thank you.